Hello, American history students. Today's topic is slavery in America, and it's impossible to cover everything in, in 10 minutes or so, so this will just be a quick overview, and any questions you might have, I'll be happy to discuss with you in class. But America has a long history of slavery that goes back to the, the foundings of, of the early colonies. Uh, the British founded Jamestown in 1607, and within a couple decades, the first slaves arrived in in 1619, and it's going to last all the way until the completion of the Civil War in 1865. So we're talking a couple hundred years of slavery, generation upon generation, never experiencing freedom, um, suffering, enduring tragedies. Um, the northern states, as you probably learned in eighth grade, um, remained intact and fought the southern states, known as the Confederacy, in the American Civil War. And part of the, of the reason the Civil War was fought was the formation of the Republican Party. Abraham Lincoln was elected in 1860, and the Republican Party's goal was to stop slavery from spreading into new, new, potential new states, new territories uh, that existed in the West. And the South felt that their way of life was being threatened, and they uh, were hell-bent on continuing their ways. Uh, and as you can see in the, the, the bottom point here, the 13th Amendment formally abolished slavery, which we'll build up to. So Africans were captured, um, brought across the Atlantic Ocean on the Middle Passage, and it was incredibly dangerous. And the death rate was sometimes as high as 50%. Uh, the ships were overcrowded. Um, disease was rampant, uh, very dangerous. Uh, but nevertheless, millions of Africans were transported, you know, mainly from West Africa um, into the Americas. Brazil had the largest slave population um, here to the United States. The Caribbean had a huge amount. Um, so that was known as the Middle Passage. Um, slaves, once they arrived here, were auctioned off to the highest bidder. Uh, oftentimes, they were sent to the Caribbean to, uh, to get them ready for work, where they'd learn a new language and uh, receive a new European name, um, show the labor requirements, and then from there they could be sold off again, uh, possibly to the United States. Um, so this slide here, again, uh, we talked about the first Africans arrived in 1619. Uh, the Portuguese and the Spanish were already bringing Africans into South and, and Central America. Uh, slavery in, in the colonies existed in all 13 of them. Even Connecticut had slaves at one point. However, New England colonies was not really conducive to slavery. Um, can't really have large plantations here. The weather's not fit for it. However, slaves did live in the cities and worked in, on small farms. In the middle colonies, and centered in the Chesapeake Bay, uh, we see large tobacco plantations, um, and that was the center of the domestic slave trade. And the, the southern part of the colonies, Carolina and Georgia, uh, there were large rice and cotton plantations, which required lots of slave labor. Uh, most slaves could not read or write. Uh, it was illegal for them to learn. Um, slaves were not allowed to carry weapons and gather in groups, uh, own property, legally marry, defend themselves against a white person, speak in court. Um, it was very rough for the slaves. Uh, but they did fight back. There were resistance. Many slaves would run away, um, or sometimes they would run away for a short amount of time. Um, they would sometimes kill animals, destroy crops, start fires, steal, break their tools, even poison their food. Uh, in fact, when George Washington died, he had it in his will that um, when his wife died, Martha Washington, all the slaves would be freed. And she was terrified that they were all going to kill her. Uh, you can't blame her, so she ended up freeing the slaves even before she died. Uh, smart lady. Uh, there were major slave revolts, which we talked about in class. The Stono Rebellion, um, a slave named Gabriel, another one, Denmark Vesey, uh, Nat Turner. They all tried, but were not able to, to uh, overcome their masters, unfortunately. Um, as we can see here, um, this unfortunate slave, the, the unbelievable torture that he experienced over the course of a lifetime. You know, the scars here, um, just a reminder of the evils of slavery. And as you can see, slaves were often brutally punished for any misbehaviors they had. 
And those punishments included whippings, brandings, uh, being sold away, gagged, um, other torturous methods uh, were used as well. Um, the Compromise of 1820, which is not in the slide in front of you, uh, that settled the slave question temporarily. Back then there were 11 free states and 11 slave states, and they added Missouri and Maine to try to keep it balanced. Uh, Missouri became a slave state, Maine became a free state, and that was to, uh, to have a balance in Congress. Some 30 odd years later now, now that America had just defeated the, uh, the Mexicans in, in the Mexican War and stole a bunch of their land, now you have all this new territory. And again, a compromise had to be met. And with this compromise, California became a free state. And to balance it off to make the South happy, a Fugitive Slave Act was passed, which required Northerners to return escaped slaves to the masters. And Northerners were outraged by this act, and it further drove the country apart. And at this point, America was only 11 years away from the Civil War. Um, so here's the Compromise of 1850. Um, so California becomes a free state, and the, er the er other areas, New Mexico, Utah, this unorganized territory up here, which will be Kansas and Nebraska, um, they are going to be open to popular sovereignty, which is an idea that the people in these territories can vote whether they want to have slavery or not. Um, and all of these states here, I'm not sure what color it is because I'm colorblind. I'm going to go with yellow. Maybe I'm right. Uh, these are the southern states that allowed slavery. These states up here, I think it's green, uh, those are your free states. And everything else, these are not states quite yet. Uh, a very famous Supreme Court case was the Dred Scott decision, which again is going to uh, further widen the gap between the North and the South. Dred Scott was a slave who was later taken to free territory by his owner. And since he lived in free territory, Dred Scott argued he should be free. So he had a, a sympathetic owner that allowed him to take the case to court. Uh, he sued for his freedom, and he actually won the first case. But it was appealed, and then Dred Scott lost, which returned him to slavery. And then it was appealed again, this time to the Supreme Court, who was going to settle this question once and for all. And Dred Scott lost uh, seven to two. And the Supreme Court said he is uh, not a citizen, he is property. Um, thus, he has no right to even sue in federal court. So Dred Scott was returned to slavery, and this was a big setback for the North. Luckily for Dred Scott, his owner did give him his freedom. Uh, in 1860, the very first Republican was ever elected, and that was Abraham Lincoln. And Lincoln was a threat to the South because Lincoln and the Repub Republicans vowed to not let slavery spread to any new states that could be formed in the future. Lincoln also said that he was going to keep slavery in the southern states. Uh, he believed, and most people as well, that there, there's no way legally that slavery could be abolished. So slavery was safe where it existed, but the South was worried that it was not going to be allowed to spread anywhere else. So the war began when the southern troops fired upon Fort Sumter in South Carolina, which started the Civil War. So as the war went on, uh, Lincoln was waiting for a big victory um, so that he can make this announcement, this Emancipation Proclamation to free the slaves. And once victory was attained at the bloody Battle of Antietam, which was devastating, 23,000 Americans died in one day, if you can imagine that. Um, but shortly after, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed the slaves in the southern states. Um, does that mean that, that slaves down in Mississippi said, well, Lincoln said I'm free, so I'm out of here? Obviously, they had to wait until after the war was over. Uh, the South did lose the Civil War, and Congress was able to pass the 13th Amendment since the southern states were no longer part of the United States of America, which freed the slaves. Uh, and that was ratified in 1865, the same year that the Civil War came to an end. Uh, again, this is that picture that we saw before. 
of a Mississippi slave. This is a year before his freedom. And that led to our next period known as segregation, which we're going to spend uh, a lot of time in class talking about, and this will be the next video that we watch, but this is obviously a more modern photograph of, uh, of water fountains, and we have the white, white's only water fountain, which is here, and then the, the colored designated water fountain for African Americans. So I'm going to end it here. Uh, your homework is to write a two-paragraph summary, which will be due tomorrow.